guys welcome back to uh, my channel and uh, hope so the last video I made about uh, my experience at my my experience at uh, attachment how I, the experience was good or bad and than information so on this video I want to share with you how I got the attachment what my roles were during the attachment and uh, a little advice for anyone who wants to get attachment in Kenya so uh, first uh, getting attachment wasn't, wasn't very easy and at the same time it was not so difficult so I first applied for attachment at uh, several companies uh, that was like three months or two months before the actual attachment was supposed to begin. So most of these companies, some did not reply, some replied. Let me share with you those that are inside. So uh, I applied uh, KCB, County Government of Kisumu, NHIF, Kodi, Kodin, Toklift, KRA, and uh, a lot of like Bukura school a lot of other companies that I can't even remember so most of the time I was just sending emails I was just sending emails and uh, hoping for feedback from these selected companies but I got reply from just a few of them and uh, the first reply I got was from Oh, I actually used a software company based in Zoom, so that was my best shot. And Codin is based in Nairobi, so my first reply was from Codin. And they told me I was late for my application, so uh, I, I could not get a chance. So that was it. I lost Codin. Then I applied for... KCB did not give me a reply, so... That one went that way. And uh, county government of Kisumu applied the accounts was from Codin, who told me I am late, so I didn't get a chance. The second reply was from Podi, Podi HQ. So Podi called me for an interview. Actually, they sent out some to do with Alexa. Alexa is a functional programming language, so I had like a week to learn the language, then uh, do the task. Of which during that time I was doing exams, so I, I did not go through the Alexa school website they recommended. So I didn't perform well in the interview. Uh, I did the task and went. That was the only thing I focused on. I didn't read the, more of the basics. So when I went for the interview, the interview was nice. Uh, my first technical interview it was, it was good. And uh, I learned a lot, met some awesome people like Uyanzi, uh, Frank, uh, Peterson. So I met a lot of friends. Uh, I applied for NHIF of which I applied and uh, they told me to come back after two weeks and for me because I was standing late I didn't wait for the two weeks so I went back after three days three or so days to follow up on the application and when I went back for follow up they took me immediately they didn't even wait so they just took me and and I started working immediately it's good I went up I went for the uh, follow up with a decent clothing so I started working on that very day so remember they told me to wait for two weeks for them to reply or to to, to call me then I went after three days and they took me in so that's a point to note then uh, I worked with the NHIF for two days three days or four and uh, the task I was doing at NHIF, I was not happy about it because it was more of being a, a clerk or something of the sort. It was not technical at all. 
I could sit in Huduma Center and help people, maybe check balance, change your sick toll. I'm using their software to do this, which is not which is not what I wanted. So while I was I was at work, I saw these nice people in reflectors coming to solve our network problems. Whenever you have a problem you just do this and they are there. They help you if you forget password or what. So I asked them. I actually faked a problem. I switched off my computer and called one of them and he, he, he came. And so during lunchtime I ran upstairs and took it to the director director IT at the county government of Kisumu. So from there when I took the paper, the the application letter, he actually took it and told me the spots were left, just few spots were left, and uh, I might be unlucky. So he took he took the letter actually, so that was good. And uh, I took another letter to the HR, and they told me to wait for SMS. So again, uh, with my experience from NHIF. I didn't wait for another two weeks. I went to work the next day at NHIF. Then the, the, the other day, I went during tea break, I went to follow up at the county government of Kisumu. So I went to this director and he was almost leaving also. He was almost leaving the office. So he he was on phone and packing. So I, I just walked in and told him, hey sir, I'm here for attachment. He didn't even question me anymore. He didn't do anything. He took me, grabbed my hand and took me to one of his staff and told her that this is an attachee. Then he went. So this lady uh, took me in as, as an attachee who was already qualified. And uh, that's how my orientation began. He called someone, did my orientation, gave me a supervisor. I told that so that's how I got my attachment at the county government of Kisumu. So I also uh, applied for talk lift. Um, that is after Podi. I, I failed interview at Podi. So I applied for talking to talk lift. Talk lift they called me after receiving my CV. They called me, which was nice. I liked the talk. We talked for some minutes several minutes and uh, they called me for an interview which they told me will not be technical they will just wanted to know if I can work with other people work with other people if I'm open to learning and all that so they called me for that interview in Nairobi but since I was in Kisumu and time was really less so I decided I told them I could not make it and I'll apply again after finishing school. So I'm not, I didn't, I didn't go for the interview. Kisumu had a very nice experience. I had one of these nice people. Most of them were actually not employees. They were interns. So my supervisor was an intern, a very nice guy. It's Fred Oido. I really liked this guy from day one. He explained everything like, I'm just getting into tech, tech and I don't know nothing. So he, he actually did a very nice orientation, explaining this is a switch, this is how a switch works, and this is why we need it here, and this is a router, this is why we need it here, this is how it works, and all that. It was so nice. I really liked him. And uh, he made me be free. So. Most of the time he could send me to the server room, go and restart the server. I just tell him I don't know how to do that and he explains, takes me step by step. Simon, can you do this? I tell him I can't do that. Because that's the idea of attachment anyway. You should be learning, seeing what they do and you learn, not you are going to work. Yeah. So I learned a lot from him. He was a nice guy. Actually everyone was nice. So, at the county government of Kisumu, I was at a support team. It was like more of support. Uh, yeah, support team, ICT support. So, we 
<coughs> receive complaints from clients, those employees and all those people. Then we troubleshoot maybe network problems. It was more of networking and uh, repair than software. So me being a software developer, I was not much interested. But from the from the first time I met this guy, he changed my mind. I started loving networking because he made it look so simple and interesting. Okay, so I actually gained interest on this networks, uh, establishing new network connection, installation of softwares, maybe troubleshooting things like it means, um, repair, PC repair, laptop repair, cleaning, normal maintenance of the server, server room, installation of switches, phone network, voice over IP phones, it was nice. So that was what we were responsible for. And uh, because I'm a software developer, there was this book where you log everything you do every day. So you had to log it. I, I made a, I installed a new OS on this computer. You log that book on that book. Everyone from the support team. So this book was boring. And uh, I met Cheryl. I found Cheryl as an intern. He was two weeks old when I went. So Cheryl, Cheryl, hmm? Cheryl. So Cheryl was in charge of this book <laughs> her job was to ensure everyone logs what they do so you go and pull up a cable from somewhere somewhere you come and note and who opened the ticket maybe someone complained the computer is not working lost a password once they open a ticket you, she logs it opened from this office by this person at this time this is the person working on it status closed or not closed so the book was so big, with some task not to close and you can't know. So uh, I teamed up with Cheryl and uh, decided to automate the opening ticket. So we went to the director, Cheryl is a good, a good writer, she wrote up some requirements and uh, we went to the director and proposed. So the director was so impressed by this and she was like he was like i want you to do this thing by yesterday not even today so he asked us how long we could doing it with java although she was learning django which was nice and i was also a django developer by then so i decided to we do it in django as she learn and that because i i liked java at some point then moved to django so i prefer django more than java but I'm back to learning Java, so yeah, there. So we did that with Cheryl, and within a month, the system was up and running. So most of the time, I spent doing what I love, also coding. I called it estimating, and uh, that was it. About payment incentives, I at NHIF, I was not being paid. Podi were not paying, and Talk lift, we were to negotiate that when I go. I don't know what they were offering. And uh, they are paying well. Not well, but they, they were paying. That was Codin, Codin Academy. It's a Codin Academy, it's a software company, and uh, but mostly mobile development. I know they do a lot of mobile development. They also do backend. Oh, that's PHP and some front-end design work. It's a very nice place. So, Codin told me, the Codin CEO told me they are paying at Hachis, which was nice. That was like 26, 26,000. 26, but I was late. So, I really wanted a paying company. KRA were paying, but I didn't. They were paying 6,000, which is less, but I didn't. KCB, I know KCB pay. If you are looking for attachment, the best thing to do apply early and go for, for, for go 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 do follow-ups you have to follow up because as you can see most of these companies that I got I had to do follow-up I could not if I sat and wait maybe they would have forgotten about me and took those who went for follow-up 
I'm sure some people lose the, lost their chances because they didn't go for follow-up that I went for. So that is it. If you applied, do follow-up, even by mail, or go physically if you applied physically, or you can apply online, then go and follow up. Some some of these people don't even check their mails. So if you go do follow up, they'll find your CVs and all that. So that that's one I one advice I will tell you. Do follow ups. And the next thing, don't overdo your CV. I'll show you the CV I use. You can see the CV I use. Don't overdo your CV and all that. You are attached. You are not looking for employment or internship so just say we just they just want to know if if you can learn if you are open-minded if you can interact with people nicely that is what they are looking for in you and uh, the third advice is apply to a small company not so big company Okay, not so small like a cyber or something, but again, don't apply for a very big company. Companies that will not take you. Okay, even if they take you, chances of learning there is so small because you will never see server room. If you see server room, then that is once or twice, and uh, you won't be doing a lot of things. You'll just be doing some few stuff. So that's one thing I learned. If you want to learn more, go to a small, just a, a medium company where you can be trusted, you see. You can be sent to the server room. They can give you a chance to go and do it yourself. You get it. So that that is really awesome. And uh, yeah, that is it. That is it for this video. I don't want to, to get so long. And, uh, or visit my website by the way I have a blog uh, ombodysimons.com visit it and uh, yeah see you in my next video also remember to subscribe see you later bye